Hello and a very warm welcome to this video. Now, the day of recording, don't worry about that, but the day of release is the day before QuickBooks Connect in the UK. At least I think it is, or Get Connected, whichever they're calling it now. Even I get confused on that one. But I'm pretty sure today is that day and we should be celebrating the fact that QuickBooks Connect is here. We're gonna learn about all the new stuff that some of it I've known about and just not been allowed to talk about. But hopefully, I'll even I'll be surprised at some of the announcements they're gonna make, right? I'm talking at the event, I've got a booth set up for the event, I'm really excited for it. But unfortunately, I think that the focus of the event isn't going to be what all the new stuff is, it's going to be how much it's gonna cost. Because we've got some big changes to the way the fee structure is gonna work within QuickBooks Online in the UK. And I've gotta say, I'm really worried about it. Roll the intro. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I am a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer with a fancy new logo, that QuickBooks chap on the internet, head of accounts here at Boffix, and your podcast who goes live each and every Monday morning for Ask the Accountant. In today's video, it's a really straightforward affair. We're going to be talking about the cost of QuickBooks in the UK, and we're also going to let you know how to mitigate against some of these changes that are coming. So first of all, let's jump in to figure out exactly what the changes are. Now, first of all, the prices, forget these uh, introductory prices that happen at the point where we're seeing here, forget them for this video. Um, but we do have the prices of £10 for your sole trader, 16 for simple start, 33 for essentials, 47 for plus, and £115 for advanced. Now, typically, the cost there doesn't really worry me too much. Yes, they've gone up, they've gone up quite substantially in the last couple of years, but I still feel like you're getting great value for it. I still think that compared to the rest of the market, like you're looking at zero and everything else, more than happy with those. The actual cost, yes, I think some of them can be quite expensive, like the advance, for example, at this moment in time, very difficult to justify for certain clients, but for the right client actually does work really well. When it comes to plus and essentials, they're kind of the sweet spot, I think. I think plus is, is hitting the very high end as what it could be for the features it currently has. But I think it justifies it. And essentials and simple start to me, you know, they're the price they should be at. And sole trader, loving it at £10 a month is exactly where it needs to be. But if we strip away that, what am I upset about? Well, I'm upset about some restrictions that come into place. So you may not have noticed this, but let's have a look at what it says down the bottom here. So first and foremost, when you go everyday admin, it says chart of accounts up to 250 Chart of accounts up to 250 with a little asterisk. We'll have a look at the asterisk in a minute. Chart of accounts 250, chart of accounts 250, and then it's only when we get to advance, it's unlimited chart of accounts. Now that's completely different. That's never been in place before. But what does it mean? Well, if I go to QuickBooks itself and have a look at what's what we've got in front of us here. Chart of accounts is basically under chart transactions, chart of accounts, it's this list here. And I'll be honest with you. 250 is quite a lot, quite quite a lot to be there. So I don't think many people will be worried about it. Many people are gonna go past this, but it is it is something that for the first time ever, we've gotta start thinking about what that number is. See, what we use chart of accounts for is these are the categories that we post. Now, first of all, in America, we do actually get a nice little breakdown in your billing area of what it is that you're paying for, so at least you can find out in the UK, we don't. So that's gonna be problem number one is, well, how many chart of accounts do I have? Well, I can go back to the transactions area, back to chart of accounts. I could run report. Uh, I could export it to Excel, open the file. And there's a crude way of doing it. I could just see, well, how many chart of accounts I've got here. I got 321 chart of accounts. So, in theory, I am well over that threshold, well over that number in this one. And chart of account, for me, are ways in which we can really add value to clients. We can split things up and put through there. We can say, instead of having just one heat and light figure, we can do electric, gas, and see what the price difference between the two is. Maybe look at utilities as one and water as well. Like, chart of account is something we really push for and, and want people to use the best. Basically, it means this file here, and this is my case study file, this is my uh, one that I use to do these videos in, right? Come the deadline, which we're not 100% sure what that deadline is, uh, I'll be over that 250. So what do I have to do to fix this? 
Well, the way to do this is if I go into the chart of accounts, I can select the ones I'm not using. Now, you've got to be really careful. They have to be ones that are empty, don't have any transactions in already. But what you want to be doing is ticking them that you don't want. Let's say this one, and maybe that one, and tick some more here. Tick these ones, tick that one, tick all these ones. Basically, once you've got to the point you want to tick, use batch actions and make an active. You're going to have to keep doing that until you strim that down. And then you're going to have issues like I've got here, where some of them are not able to be deactivated because they're using an automated workflow, they not don't have a zero balance, or one of the default counts accounts use it that's going to be your biggest problem right because this this restriction here is where we're going to find a lot of them that we're going to have struggling to be able to close down but we're going to have to go through that and it tells you at the top which one to have and we're going to have to reduce our amount of use so that we're below that 250 number so that was a shock i'll be completely honest to you it was a shock to see that the chart of accounts now being 250 um, is going to be one of the numbers there. Only accountants can see and edit the chart accounts in the sole trader plan. So that's what the asterisk thing on that. Okay, fair enough. So, you know, that's what they're saying. Sole trader should never really need more than 250, but it's only the accountant can deal with it anyway. So we've got full control. But having that chart of accounts could be a real problem for us. Um, we'll notice here the users now are strict users. So, you know, we're only allowed one user for sole trader, even though as an accountant, we're adding and we become a user. I think that's where this doesn't work, right? Because as a sole trader, us as the accountant needs to add, so then how do we add our clients on board? See how that works. Same with Simple Start. You only have one user, but if you've got an accountant tax, they become a user as well. So are we not allowed to add clients to Simple Start at the moment? It's little things like that I don't think are gonna quite work. Essentials up to three, plus five. That hurts me a little bit. I think there's a lot of clients we have where five users are, are, are typical. And there's a lot of clients where they have to have five users, right? Like char charities, for example, might have in their uh, T's and C's in their, in their covenant that they have to have five users to be able to keep an eye on it and five treasurers or, or, or five that has access to it to make sure that nothing is going wrong, et cetera, et cetera. And then only up to 25 users in advance. And, and this, again, this makes me really question where advance is. Like, why set the limit at 25? What's the reason for that? Like advanced is supposed to be that stepping stone between you know, plus and actually going to a full-blown ERM system and going down that, right? So why set it at 25 users? It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. And then finally, um, the other restriction is on your classes. So class and locations only comes up into plus anyway, so that's fine, we, we're happy with that, that makes sense. You only add up to 40. Um, chart of accounts in the plus one going forward. That idea of having these new restrictions in place, so chart of accounts up to 250, as you can see in my crude example there, I'm already over 250, I already have more than that in there, so I would have to do something. What will happen if I didn't change though? Well, this is where my big contention of this comes from, because for me, if I was handling this and having to put this in, my assumption and the way that I would kind of expect this to run is that, if I am already using over 250, then just restrict me from creating any new ones, right? Stop me in my tracks. If I try and add a new one, tell me off, say I've got to reduce down below. Um, and then that way I've got a choice. And I'm either going to increase my subscription from um, the 250 got here up to unlimited chart of accounts. That's option number one for me, and I could do that. Or option number two, don't do that, and I work around it, right? And then I'm in control then. Yeah, it sucks that I'm kind of almost being forced an upgrade, but at least I can have an opportunity to maybe work around it, try and find a different way, like try and find ways to, to mitigate the issue and try and go from there. That's what I would expect to be how this change would come into play. But unfortunately, the way this is going to come in is if you're over that number by the deadline, which I believe is the day before, it's the day of this video, so the day before QuickBooks Connect, if you're over it, you get locked out, locked out of your of your file, and you can only get the functionality back by going to upgrade to the next one, which in most cases means you've got to go up to advance. That means that you've got to be forced into a £115 upgrade a month just because your chart of account at this moment in time 
is over that number. And to me, that's unacceptable. That just doesn't feel right. Now, hopefully that's not what's going to happen, but that's what we were led to believe. That's where we looked through kind of emails and stuff that come through and all that sort of stuff. That's how it reads. That's going to happen. I hope for everyone's sake that that won't be the case because that would just be absolutely crazy. But the most important thing to note is that the 250 chart of account rule is coming into play. It's already there now if you buy a brand new license. So going forward, we, we need to kind of get on top of that. I do fear that going forward, the, the set for 250 now, is this like a placeholder? Are we going to see those being reduced? You know, are we going to see the simple only up to 100, for example, and then 150, then 250? I don't know. I'm completely guessing at that point. But it does worry me and it does it does frustrate me that then they're starting to put these extra restrictions in place. Like increasing the fee was one thing and we can all accept that. But then putting these restrictions in just feels like we've just, I don't understand it. For me, we should make it so that the reason people want to upgrade is because we're giving them amazing features that they can see value to those. That's how you encourage someone to upgrade from essentials to plus to advance. You give them those amazing features. Like for me, like Simple Start's a great product. I love Simple Start, but I can't get on with Simple Start because managing bills is essential to me. So I, I would always go on essentials only. Currency is really important to some of my clients so that, you know, only essentials to advance would work. And then track stock, some of my clients can't live without the stock feature. So they would happily play the plus because they get stock, they get budgets, they get projects, they get classes. Like they're happy to pay that extended fee because it's the right thing to do. Now they're forced to be into maybe advance or well, advance is the only one that offers unlimited chart of accounts because they have to and it but it doesn't but like what else are they going to use in advance i've got some clients like this case study one we've got here would have no benefit for going into advance none of the advanced features are worthwhile to them so why are they being forced into it at least be more generous with the jump up here at least at least if they're on essentials imagine they're on simple start and they've got 250 and they're now paying 16 pound a month and you turn around to them and say well you know You've logged in today and for you to continue using this, you've got to pay 150 and that's a hundred pound more a month. What benefits are they going to get if they've been really happy with Simple Start? It's a really scary world, I think. And I don't quite understand what the benefit of pushing them there. Users almost understood it. The, the You know, it almost became like, a, you know what, as you grow, you're going to need more users going on there. Uh, to mitigate against users, by the way, don't forget that when you go and add a user, so remember when you're adding roles, you can add different ones. Billable roles count towards your user limit or the in-house accountant, standard of access, or these ones that are there. And the non-billable roles don't count towards your user limit or track time and view company records. Those two roles, the read-only roles basically don't have them. So this is where you can get around that limit a little bit by basically saying, look, I can add X, Y, Z, um, but they're never going to need to actually do anything in QuickBooks. They just need to view it for whatever reason. So that charity situation I was talking about before. So then you could just give them the read-only access that way. At least then you're not having to count them towards your user limit. The little things like that, that's where the frustration is because I don't think they've been thought about. They've not been considered a restriction to this, that, and everything else. And I feel like it was a knee-jerk reaction that, especially when we've just increased the prices, don't see what the benefit was. Um, yeah. If our product was, you know, less than some of the competitors, then I'd understand this as a, a way to, you know, encourage people to increase. But I feel like this, doing both an increase and then putting restrictions on place and being so aggressive in the way the restrictions work by literally locking people out, scares me for what's to come going forward but there we have it so remember keep an eye on your chart of accounts hopefully quickbooks will give us a way to actually look at how many chart of accounts we've got without having to download a report and find out ourselves that at least could be the minimum of them right like they're going to put this restriction in at least give them a give us a ui so we can understand how many chart of accounts we've got that could that minimum would be helpful 
Um, and then don't forget that if you have got chart accounts, you're over that limit, use that opportunity in that left hand side to tick, 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 make it active. And if you've got users that aren't being used, take the users off, give them read only access if you need to. Otherwise, you may find yourself locked out going forward. I don't think the class and location one's going to be too problematic because there was always a restriction of how many of them you were allowed. But just keep an eye on them, have a look and see what there is. But yeah, you're only allowed up to 40 as a plus user. To be fair, if you're using more than 40 class and location, you probably would find advanced quite useful for you. So that one, not as problematic. But that child account one's going to cause some issues out there. And I think the user access, we just need to keep on top of it going forward. And there you have it. My name has been Aaron Patrick. Let me know below what you think to these chains. Am I overacting? Have I got this wrong? Because I feel like all I'm doing at the moment is get, switching this camera on, doing some rant, doing some moan. Um, and I feel like there must be, there must be someone out there going, no, Aaron, you've got this wrong. This, is, this isn't as bad as you think. I think, you know, here's the positive, boom, boom, boom. Because I'm normally the person who finds the positive. I'm normally the idiot that's going online defending decisions that are made by Intuit QuickBooks and normally the one that gets flack for it as being a quote unquote fanboy. I can't find a single positive out of this. I just, I'm bamboozled by it. I think, you know, the timing of it, the way, the aggressiveness of it, not talking to us, not giving us opportunities to talk about it or anything like that. I just feel like, yeah, it's a scary time, um, and I'm yeah, and I'm worried about what this means for the future. Like, are they going to be even more aggressive with more elements of this? If this works for them, and they see an uptick of you know people are having to force into X Y Z. Do they get more aggressive with bills? Do they get more aggressive with invoices? That's what the competitors are. The competitors restrict you how many bills and invoices you're allowed at certain levels. That, for me, would be catastrophic if they brought that into play but yeah hopefully this is as far as they go hopefully this is as aggressive as it is but yeah and and did they do they need to be so aggressive on the upgrade side because if that's the case like we'll, we'll wait and see maybe it won't be as aggressive as that but if it is i think that's a really poorly executed way of dealing with it but there you have it my name is Bernard patrick don't forget to put comments in there if you want more interesting things about the world of quickbooks or you want to listen to me moan even more then don't forget you're already in the right place so use the like button use the comment button use that subscribe button more than anything else the more subscribers we get the further we can take this and the more opportunities we can get to look into more cool things with the world of quickbooks my name is bernard patrick it's been an absolute pleasure to do the video for all you and i will see you in the next video bye for now Hello and welcome to this new series. Hello and welcome to this video. 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 Alright, let's get it set. Let's do this. Oh no, you're alright. Yes, I'm aware we go live every morning. The next generation, is that everyone else that missed it? Yeah. So, come All right, you've told us what you love about the industry, but what would you change about the industry? Where do I start? Because during that period of time, where did everyone turn to? Their accountant, right? Their advisor, the bookkeeper, and you all did phenomenal work for small business.